not able to make it. So I'm going to click on my got it message. Right. And um, if you haven't had a chance already, please feel free to type your name, role, and college or organization in the chat. Also feel free to share something that's great about today. And yes, Rihanna, dog videos on TikTok absolutely count. I'm just too old to know how to TikTok. So um, I just watch my actual dogs running around the house. <laughs> um, I'm going to share my screen and just um, get us started with a couple of slides prior to handing it over to our guests of honor uh, from MZ Burning Glass. We're going to really be steering the ship today around the, um, the data that you have at your disposal on your campuses and uh, opportunities for use. So sharing my screen, let's see. All right, can folks uh, see the slideshow? Yes. Great. All right, thank you. So um, again, welcome, feel free to share in the chat your name, role, institution, and anything that you want to share about what's great together but today. Our time together uh, today, our purpose is really to kind of understand how to access and use the alumni data that is available um, on your campus already in your Guided Pathways campus work. And as an agenda, uh, we're going to just be talking about the alumni data and Guided Pathways how to access that data, uses, uses for it, and then um, plenty of time for questions and answers. I know that we have a good amount of time budgeted for today. We probably won't use it all, but there is lots of time to make sure that you all feel confident about using this data and um, connecting. So I just want to get us started with um, an overview of our guided pathways vision and mission. I'll speak a little bit about guiding principles and then some focus areas. Um, in, in Washington, our work in guided pathways, we really aim to have it grounded in racial equity. And this is to ensure that it's aligned with our state board vision, mission, and values, but also doing the right thing um, by our students who have not been served well in higher education. And so that really is one of the things that makes Washington special. Um, and it also makes the flavor of the work a little bit different. And um, we use this vision and mission and our principles to help keep us grounded and to help remind us as a, as a roadmap, if you will. So our vision is a system that advances racial, social, and economic justice by achieving equitable student aspiration, access, economic progress, educational, and career attainment. And I think there are a lot of connections that we'll be able to draw from that economic progress and career attainment from um, it into this data work um, for alumni outcomes and where are our students going and how are we thinking about that? How are we using that to improve what we do and also to help students who are coming in understand uh, their options and connect to students that have been successful in our programs in the past. Our mission is to create an equitable system that prepares all learners to engage in a diverse society and workforce achieve economic mobility through educational attainment and contribute to a socially just society. In terms of our principles, um, the first principle is that this is urgent work. Um, the urgency, I think, can't be stressed enough that um, a lack of urgency sends a message, especially when we think about our vision. We can't wait for racial, social, and economic justice and recognizing the way that education is connected there um, is huge. And so it's with that urgency that, that I hope we engage in this work, that I uh, am, am working to lead us in this work. 
So it's urgent, radical, equity-minded, transformational organizational change. So not just changing one or two practices, but really thinking about how we do our work and how we do our work together. Culturally responsive commitment to racial and social equity by dismantling systemic policies and practices that perpetuate inequities. So again, really looking widespread and digging deep to make sure that we're changing the things that matter to impact outcomes. Principle three is really elevating the voices of students and faculty and staff, as well as community members, recognizing that these voices are essential to fully engage in adaptive problem focused inquiry processes, leading to meaningful action and sustained systemic change. And there's so many important words and concepts in just that one sentence, I feel like we could do a whole webinar on just that principle. Um, but I think that again, connecting this work to that principle, how are we connecting um, to the experiences of students, the outcomes of students with students that are going into various industries, again, to help shape our work here. Um, intentional collaborative learning through partnerships, professional and resource development. And here we have a partnership with um, MZ Burning Glass to help elevate some of the data and help us give some information to help us think and do better with our students in the system. And then focus on learning and outcomes aligned with community values and industry needs. Um, I think that really speaks for itself. And we have ways that we do that. And there are essential practices that we look at and um, high impact practices that we evaluate as this work continues to go on, but that we really think about these essential and emerging practices to meet universal and targeted completion goals. We know that it is important that all students, that our completion rates in general um, rise significantly for all students while also recognizing that there's important targeted work to do to advance the, um, the completion goals for black and brown students. Um, and the way that we do this there's lots of ways, but this is really pulled from legislative. Um, this, this is what we have a significant legislative investment to do. So comprehensive program and pathway mapping, which the colleges have um, been doing for some time and are in different places and iterations with that. Dedicated advising and career counseling. And again, I, I, I know that our, our um, our experts here are gonna help make these connections pretty clear between the what we do and how this data helps inform us. So dedicated advising and career counseling, knowing where our students are working and the industries they go into has a pretty significant impact or could have a pretty significant impact on how we do our advising and career counseling work. And then evidence-based practices that are closing those opportunity gaps for historically underserved populations. So equity competent academic advising services, career development programming, and then also thinking about um, clear information regarding financial aid and financial literacy. And in addition to that, anti-racist curriculum and teaching practices, which um, we're doing some really great and exciting work around. So this is what the implementation looks like um, and what we, many of the ways, many of the areas that we focus on in helping um, with peer and professional learning, our learning agenda, community and partnerships with the colleges to implement guided pathways fully. Um, and that is where my time really ends. Um, we have been meeting with various groups to share this information. Um, the data has already been provided to all of the colleges through the research and planning commission. Um, I've been with the state board for a few years, but I still get tongue tied over some of my acronyms. So please bear with me. So with the research and planning commission, and then tomorrow afternoon, we are also meeting with the PIC, um, public information commission. And then um, on June 1st, we will be meeting with the um, Career and Employment Services Council. So really trying to 
get this information to the folks who will be able to use it best. And uh, we are starting with our Guided Pathways leads and folks who are most engaged with Guided Pathways on their campuses. So um, I would now like to just turn it over to our friends who are presenting. We have uh, Philip Tate, are you, are you up? Here, thanks Monica. Great. And you should be able to share your screen should you need to. Awesome, thank you so much. Um, I did not put this in the chat, but um, one of the reasons today is good for me, I got my contact prescription updated this morning. So it's been way too long. Check that box, I'm feeling good. Um, really glad to be here and uh, share with you all some of the things we've been working on as it relates to alumni outcomes and uh, just being able to track that. Uh, as Monica mentioned, this is information that we've shared out to each of the colleges. And so I wanted to take a few moments here today to provide a little more information on that, give you some uh, best practices in terms of how to use that, um, how we've seen colleges use this information, both in the state and um, across the US. For those of you who, uh, may not be familiar with what we do. Um, I, I'm seeing a lot of familiar faces here, um, some not so familiar, but essentially what we do is we provide labor market analytics, labor market data through consulting and software solutions to community colleges. And so um, one of those projects we're gonna be talking a little bit about today. I know we have, um, I think it was an hour and a half booked. We're gonna do our best to get us out of here at the hour. So um, we will be leaving some time for questions. Um, but we're looking to give some time back here today and not uh, take too much of your afternoon. So uh, with that, I'm going to just kind of briefly outline what we're looking at here in terms of the project itself. Uh, and today's agenda really is um, just to give you a sample of this information, show how it can help your college, and then give you the next steps for actually accessing the data. Um, so that's what we're going to be focusing in on today. So uh, I'm going to uh, very short, I think seven seven slide deck presentation here and then we're going to turn to uh, some other folks who are joining me from MZ Burning Glass to look at the actual uh, outcomes data. Um, so we're going to jump in here. This first thing here, I really don't want to belabor it too much. This is something you are all familiar with, but really just trying to look at this for, through the lens of guided pathways. Here are some of the areas that we've seen colleges use this information within that context. Um, and so really going to focus in on, the, on these particular areas here today. And then, of course, going forward as you have other questions or you start to dig into this outcomes data. But really what we're going to be talking about today is what this project is, um, what it's designed to do, and then how a little bit more about how we did it. So just wanted to give a brief summary for those who aren't familiar about where this conversation is at to date. So late or mid last year, we, we uh, contracted with the state board to provide an alumni outcomes study, both in aggregate and then for each of the specific colleges, um, just trying to provide some more outcomes information related to where are their alumni working? What are the skills that they have? Uh, what's their job title? Those kinds of um, pieces of information really helpful toward a few different use cases. I've noted some of them here, building alumni networks, uh, foundation outreach, program review, program development, and then of course, marketing your programs um, are a few of the key areas we see colleges using this information. So, uh, but really the goal is, as I, as I lay out here, providing insights for both in aggregate and then for each of the colleges. And so that's what we're gonna be, that's what we're gonna be looking at. And you can see some of the parties involved in that. Um, and I think I see a chat coming through. I just wanna, okay, cool. Just wanted to make sure there wasn't a, a question. We will have some time for questions at the end as well. But really quickly walking you through what this what this looks like, why what makes this project uh, what it is. So we maintain a profiles database of over 130 million individuals working and living in the US. And that information comes from any um, publicly available self-reported social media type source. So you think of LinkedIn where I go on and I can say, Philip Tate, I'm an account executive. Here are the skills I have. I work at MC Burning Glass. Here's where I went to school. All that information is uh, within this, this profiles database that we're scraping and updating. Um, and as I mentioned, that at, at scale contains over 130 million profiles. 
What the Alumni Outcomes Project that we've undertaken here is doing is taking that profiles database and then overlaying it with student records. So in this case, records that the State Board provided us, uh, we're going to be able to come in and, and basically append the information we have to the information they've provided us on those students to get back a series of deliverables that really digs into both aggregates uh, for different program areas, but then also individual uh, individual people level findings on those employment outcomes, the skills they have, where they went to school um, afterwards, and so on. And I just kind of walked through um, that, that process here. You can see that our profile sources are the starting point. We pull that into our database, and then we match that with the student and alumni records that the State Board provided to us, and then return back the deliverables we're going to be looking at today. So that's the big overall concept of what, what we've done here, the information we've delivered to this point. Um, and we talked a little bit about how colleges use this um, Generally speaking, we're seeing a lot of uh, engagement when it comes to these particular areas. So um, one of the one of the things we're going to be doing is where we can find contact information. We're going to be pulling that in as well. So if you're looking for perhaps a more updated source for outreach from an alumni engagement perspective, whether that's to continue building a network, whether that's philanthropic in nature, um, that's an area that that colleges often see a lot of value in this data set. Marketing and enrollment, um, basically making the case at scale, right? You know, anecdotal um, stories of particular alumni outcomes are really, really helpful, but it's really going to be strengthened if you have the data to, to demonstrate, you know, here's where alumni graduated from this program are working now. Here are the job titles they have. Here's their, um, you know, estimated salary information. Those are the kinds of uh, information that are, that's going to be really helpful toward demonstrating uh, robust outcomes in the past and building a case for this program or certificate in the future. Program review, um, whether that's for uh, advising right now, whether that's for accreditation purposes, and then just employer partnerships. You know, if you can determine that there's a local employer that's that's got a significant number of your alumni working there, there could be inroads there that you didn't know about in the past. So those are kind of some of the areas we've seen. Um, and we're going to be talking a little bit at the end about uh, if you have questions about where to get this data, you reach out to us. But I wanted to just give you for now sort of the short and sweet version of where you should be going um, to get more information about this. So specifically as it relates to how do I get to my college's outcomes data, you're going to want to get in touch with Maria Byler, who's on the call here today. That's her email address. Um, and then if you're curious about other ways that we're helping colleges um, outside the scope of this particular project, always happy to to see where we align there. Uh, my contact information is there too. But I'm going to turn it over to uh, my colleague, Luke Bruno. He's going to walk us through um, the actual information. You know, what, did, uh, what are some of the ways, the types of information available, um, and, and thinking deeper about how you can use this information as it relates to the Guided Pathways framework. So Luke, I'm turning it over to you now. I'm going to stop my share and let you go. Awesome. Thanks, Philip. So yeah, just to introduce myself real quick, my name is Luke Bruno. Uh, like Philip said, I'm a product specialist on the alumni outcomes team here at MC Burning Glass. So for this project, um, I was the main point of contact on our side for the most part. So helping the state board collect the data that we needed, uh, matching that data to our profile database, and then uh, delivering those deliverables back to both the state board and then the, uh, each individual college. So um, I believe I've contacted several of you already uh, via email and probably Maria as well. Uh, so some of you may already know me, but it's great to see the rest of you that I've met before. Um, so yeah, like Philip said, I want to share my screen here and just give you a brief look at um, the both the web portal version of this data, as well as uh, one of the Excel files that we prepared as well. Um, now, what we're going to be looking at today is the aggregate data set, so what the State Board has access to, and what we would have delivered to each of you as your own institution's data set. So obviously, the, the sample size is going to be much bigger in this data set than what you would see. Um, since this is for the whole the whole state. Let me share my screen here. Uh, can I get a quick thumbs up? You see in the research portal here? Yeah, cool. All right, so this is what we call the research portal. Basically gives you lots of different statistics um, and, and you know, data on what your alumni are now doing. Again, this is this, the whole state. 
So you can see here some just some high level statistics. Uh, we found over 85,000 alumni, um, some general statistics on how many of them are employed in the field of study and residing in region. Uh, we can go down a little bit further, see things like top occupations. So again, we have all that profile data that will say, okay, uh, Luke Brunau, product specialist, um, you know, working at MC Burning Glass, this is where we're getting that information. So occupation, job title, company, so on and so forth. So what I want to do for today is to kind of take a look at this data and frame it in the kind of the pathways use case. And so there's several different ways that that could be done. Um, I think what I want to do first is to highlight um, the first pillar and just kind of talk through that a little bit and how that could be applied to the tool. So clarify pathways to end goals. Let's we'll start with, with that first. So let's just say you have a student coming in uh, and they're really wanting to know um, uh, for a specific major that they already have in mind, what can I expect after I graduate? This tool is very helpful for that. Um, for example, I can go in here into the filter on the top left and let's go for, uh, let's just do registered nursing for, as an example. Click on that. And now you can see it's filtering down to just that one program area. And now I like to really use the Sankey diagram for talking about that pathways initiative. It, it looks like a pathway in the first place, but this basically shows you what sort of occupations are our alumni working in coming from the specific uh, program area. And this is very valuable information for that student if they're wondering uh, that sort of thing. So registered nurse obviously being at the top, um, almost all of them, or it's more like half of them. Uh, you can see there's several other different career opportunities here. So things like uh, medical managers, uh, critical care nurses, nurse practitioners, and the list goes on. The rest of those being a little bit smaller in sample, uh, but registered nursing being uh, pretty big at the top. Uh, maybe they wanna know not so much the occupation specifically, but maybe the employer. You could scroll down. We looked at the company names down here. Uh, you can see there's lots of health-related employers. So Providence, Swedish, um, Peace Health, Franciscan, so on and so forth. So it gives them the sort of idea of okay, where can I expect to work coming from this specific program area. Another top one when we're talking about this uh, outcomes data is, is skills data. So what sort of skills do they need to work on? Um, basically, this is the Specifically, these are the skills that your alumni say they have on their profiles. So that kind of gives you an idea of, okay, if I want to work in these sorts of occupations that we saw, what sorts of skills do I need to kind of, you know, refine and hone in on in, in my education? And so nursing, obviously, that's going to be a big one. Uh, basic life support, patient safety, but even some smaller ones like research, vital signs, you know, so on and so forth. So skills data is also very helpful for that sort of um, kind of pathways initiative. And there are other, other things you can look at here, uh, but I kind of want to leave that at, at that for the moment. Um, so that's kind of that's kind of the, the way I would approach the first pillar. So let me go back. Let's just talk about the second pillar for a moment. Help students choose and enter pathways. So this is helpful for that as well. Maybe you have a student who's trying to choose between two different uh, program areas. Um, let's just clear this. Um, let's just say for example, they were looking at either uh, computer programming or let's say, just say computer systems networking. Let's just, uh, as an example. So we can go in here and we can actually select both of those. So let's say uh, computer with it, programming and then I've already forgotten. I think it was computer network or computer systems networking. And which would be right here. So you can choose both of those, and this will basically show you, okay, we're comparing these two now, combining them, what sorts of occupations are coming from these two different areas. And you can see some of them are kind of leading to the same occupations. Um, some of them are quite different. And so it's helpful from that perspective, kind of give them the answer to that question. Uh, similarly, you know, employers, you can see Amazon's gonna be one of the top employers for these sorts of programs. Microsoft, Boeing, T-Mobile, uh, Dell is there as well. So that's another way this could be used. Also, just to kind of give you another way, you could do this from the flip perspective. So we've been looking at this from a specific program standpoint, but maybe you're trying to, that, that student's more interested in a specific occupation that they want to get into. Let's do that. So clear programs. Let's just say they want to be a software developer. 
Uh, you can go down here to the bottom of these filters and there's a there's a place uh, occupation five digit sock code where you could type in that exact same uh, thing software developers select that and now this is like i said kind of giving you that flip perspective what programs are producing software developers now we're answering that question um, so it kind of gives them different options so computer programming is there obviously but there's some others uh, liberal arts physical sciences uh, lots of folks coming from physical sciences, actually 487 of them, um, and some other smaller, uh, you know, system networking, um, computer programming, you know, so on and so forth. So helpful from that perspective. You can kind of scroll down. What skills do software developers say they have? You know, uh, speaking from the alumni standpoint, software engineering, Java, JavaScript. Uh, C sharp and C plus plus, so on and so forth. So that's kind of how I like to approach this when we're talking about the pathways initiatives. Um, yeah, so that, uh, that that would be the research portal. Now there are a couple other deliverables that we provided. I want to quickly show you one of them. Um, this is going to be called the um, the data file. Let me switch to that real quick. Any questions on the portal, on the data file? Um, any questions on how other institutions have used the in information? Anything like that? There was a question earlier about how to position this um, in like a widget format. So I did want to uh, talk about that just a little bit. That is something. Um, I'll pull up an example here just so you all can see. Uh, what I'm about to show you is not included in the state board scope of work. So this would be something that um, we can take a look at for each of the colleges if it's something you feel would be worthwhile pursuing. Let me uh, share my screen here. So this is a tool we call Go Recruit. And basically what this does is it pulls in the outcomes data that we've already delivered to the colleges and then allows you to build a few different, you can see some different themes here. Um, you build and customize different widgets around some of that outcomes data. So you can come in here and take a look at, for example, where do your alumni work, customize how you want that to look in terms of um, percentages or just you want a list. Um, see out of that outcomes data, and this is just some sample data from another institution, but customize and see, okay, based on that outcomes data, what do we want to really uh, prioritize and emphasize in each of these different areas? But you could come in and start to demonstrate from a few different perspectives, whether that's where they work, how they're employed in, in terms of job title capacity, the skills they have, but then you can actually just um, pull these out and export, pull them into your web pages, um, information pamphlets, for job fairs, those kinds of things are a really good application too. But you can just start to export, I think it's up to three cards at a time and uh, use, um, you know, align those with your branding from a color perspective, from a font perspective, there's a few different styles and then export, we can do a few different formats or a text only uh, export format as well. Like I said, this is something that would um, have a cost for each of the colleges. It's not something that the state board funded in the scope of work that we've delivered. But this is one way where you can then start to build out uh, further articulation in publicly facing formats for prospective students, community members uh, to start to see some of that outcomes data. So this is just a way to make that a little easier from a visualization perspective. And I'll chime in on other question we just got. Is there research slash data on who posts their employment data uh, what is the profile of LinkedIn users versus those who don't use such public tools? Yes, so generally speaking, um, the way we like to summarize it is those in more white collar occupations are more likely to make a profile than those in more blue collar occupations. So for example, a software engineer um, uh, or a salesman or a manager is much more likely to, to go out and make a profile kind of advertise themselves than a, let's say a nurse or a, a welder, a flagger, so on and so forth. 
Um, you just you really it comes down to is that person working a job who needs a profile? You know, if we think about this from a salesman perspective, they're constantly using LinkedIn to go out and make leads. Um, they they find new jobs that way, that sort of thing. But those other folks, not so much. You know, a nurse. Um, but you can think about this, if they're graduating, they might have their jobs lined up before they graduate. So from that perspective, there's not a need for them to go out and make a profile. So that's the way we like to explain it. We do, we do, our profile database does have a bias towards more of the white collar jobs. We don't have as much of the blue collar jobs in there. Um, but that again, just comes down to who makes profiles and who doesn't. Great question. Okay, and then I just wanna reiterate, all of this data is already available to each of your institutions. Um, some of you, uh, some of your institutions have already downloaded it and we're already working with your IR teams and IE teams to get it rolled out. Uh, some I've had a hard time getting in contact with. Um, so if you like the slideshow earlier, um, if you want to know who to contact at your institutions to get the data, please let Maria, Maria know and she'll get you in contact with, with that person so we can get that rolling. Any other questions? No, so the, the re, okay, the question is just, I uh, just wanna confirm from Freddie that I could download the spreadsheet from the outcomes portal. So no, they're they are separate. So the, the Excel spreadsheets is what you would da download. So what we saw the data file there would be a couple other tools along with that that I didn't show today, but three Excel spreadsheets that you would download from the FTP server, they're their own thing, and you can disperse those as much as you want uh, throughout your institution. The research portal is, um, I should have mentioned this, let me share my screen again real quick. Um, it's, it's housed on our website. So some of you on this call might have an, uh, access to Analyst, which is another tool that we have. Um, this acts a lot like analysts. So you would, you would basically have a username and password combination to get you into our website. And that would take you to analyst or, or outcomes, depending on how it's set up. But if you had both, you would click on your name. In this case, we're logged in as Monica at the, at the state board level, but you would see analyst and outcomes here. So that's how the research portal works. Now, the main functionality of the portal itself and how you can get data out of it is it gonna be this export button. So let's just say we were we were looking here at your uh, at software developers in that example I gave. You could come in here and you could export this entire P, uh, report to PDF or Word if you wanted to, or maybe you're just interested in the one Sankey diagram by itself. You could come in here, click on the little menu bar, and go download image. So that there, those are kind of what you're going to be able to get out of the portal. The Excel files, those can be manipulated as much as you want because they're in Excel. Um, but the research portals, we set up your users, we just need to know who to do that for, and then we, we train them and all that so that they can get into the tool and start um, getting reports and, and exports. Stop sharing again. Yeah, so, and then again, the, the Excel files come from the FTP server, file transfer protocol server. Yeah, um. Monica, did you have um, anything else that you wanted us to focus on here or you think we got everything that was on our list? Um, I think this has been this has been great. It's been super informative and um, I don't I don't have anything else. Are there other questions that uh, folks would like to pose. I see one question. Uh, could you show an example of program level data? Yeah, so um, let me go back to the portal. So the main way in Claire, you know, speak up if this isn't answering your question directly, but um, I think the program uh, filter here is how you would do that. So these at the state board level are going to be SIP areas just because all the different institutions in say Washington call their programs various different things, even though they might be the, basically the same program. So we try to normalize that up to the SIP level. So um, if you were in your own individual tool, you would just see your, your programs here and what you offer. So you could go into the program name selector, let's just say, um, let me clear this down here for a moment. 
Uh, I'm going to look at your the list just to get a, another example. Let's say welding technology. You can see it's not a, a huge sample size, like I said. Welders typically don't have profiles, but you could you could drill down to that specific program area on those that we were able to find, which was 400 alumni. Let's go up here, welding. And now you now you have that one specific area of perspective. You know, where are those welders work? At? What are their jobs? You see lots of welders. There's actually lots of other different types of occupations, it looks like. Um, maintenance workers, general managers, supervisors. Um, who do they work for? Pretty small percentage wise. So you got several working at Boeing and so forth. And Luke, I think you mentioned this, but if once we're talking about the, the deliverables for an individual college, we're going to be tying those back to their I don't know, naming mechanism as far as program structure goes, right? So it's going to be different for each college. Exactly. Yeah. So one note on that would be we, um, we in terms of the, the program names themselves, we delivered back however those were categorized in the state board system. Um, so there is a little bit of messiness with that. Um, there's there, there's lots and lots of different program names is what I mean. That could probably technically be rolled up into to bigger sample sizes. What we've been offering to each institution as we've been meeting with them is to clean that up. Um, and the way we would do that is your, your IR team would basically make a crosswalk from what's there to what it should be. And we can go in and, and make all that cleaner, easier to, to digest. But yes, it would all be specific to each institution um, at that level. All right, any any other questions? Great questions so far. And, and then does that answer your uh, your qu question? I can't tell who that was. CS, <laughs> it says college spark. Yes, it does, thanks. Awesome. So I'm gonna really quickly plug into the chat um, the contact information I shared in the presentation, just so you all have access to that um, if you've got further questions. So there's Maria's email. And then here's mine. And with that- You can that, send a follow-up with that contact information as well, so everyone has it in their email. Perfect. I guess real quick, I guess to wrap things up, if there's no other questions, uh, Maria, would you mind just introducing yourself real quick and just talk about kind of what the next steps would for this would be as we roll it out? Absolutely. Yeah, so like it's been mentioned, I'm Maria Byler. I'm going to be your client support. So if you don't have access to this data and you feel like you need it, um, I'm happy to help you with that. I'm also happy to provide any trainings uh, you might need. So if you want more in-depth information about portal or the files, happy to help with that or with anyone else at your institution who needs that. So really here to answer any questions, uh, help you get access to the web portal, help you get access to the data files. Awesome. Okay. I think that is everything, Ben. Thanks everyone for your time and enjoy the rest of the afternoon. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Much appreciated. No problem.